Welcome back to Optimal Frequency. I'm Grant. This is part two to the Bennington Triangle Overview. Enjoy. Glastonbury was technically two towns, Fayville and South Glastonbury, on either side of the mountain, but they were never connected due to the impossible incline between them. Glastonbury was first established as a logging and mining town. Workers were brought up to log and mine coal by railroad. Logs and coal were sent down the Bowles Brook, which forked near the town and flowed down the mountain. Both industries relied on finite resources that quickly dried up. Unfortunately, the extreme logging of the past left the mountainside unprotected from soil erosion. In 1897, a massive flood destroyed much of the railway into Glastonbury. No more attempts were made to reinvent the town. There must have been many deaths and murders of the loggers and miners of the time. Did those incidents contribute to the bad mojo of that area? <laughs> Were any of those murders caused by or instigated by evil spirits on that mountain? In 1892, a sawmill worker, Henry McDowell, drunkenly bludgeoned a co-worker to death with a rock after he heard voices telling him to attack. He was committed to an asylum but managed to escape. Did he really hear voices or was that just an excuse? So this is interesting, and uh, since I have to make a comment on the one particular thing coming up, the response, I just want to make a quick note of it. Uh, so yeah, they're saying that a whole bunch, I mean, I didn't even finish the sentence, and they're cutting, and they're going, yeah, a whole bunch of these uh, incidents were caused by the negative energy slash demons on this mountain. And then the next couple questions, they're just right on top, like, bang, they're sticking to it. Yep, demons told them, you know, I hear demons. So this next response came off the Sony camera, and it's layered, so it's, one voice says, uh, heard him proper, and as he's saying the word proper, another voice comes over and says danger. To me, this is the weirdest slash neatest kind of thing. I can see the squibbles on the page or on the screen, right, when somebody or something speaks. I wish you could lay it flat and see multiple layers so that you can see how high the word proper goes and then danger over top of it. I get it. It's almost like working in paint shop where you do layers of pictures on top of each other. But once you scrunch them down into one file, which is what we're hearing, basically one flat file, there's no way to differentiate again. If there's a sound guy out there who knows what I'm talking about, and there's got to be somebody out there who knows what I'm talking about, let me know if there's a way that you guys can break down multiple layers without using multiple tracks. Is there software or AI where you can actually see... It's like having a conversation at your kitchen sink, okay? Playing cards with your grandparents. This is what the way I look at it, right? Both of them are talking at the same time, yet if I focus on grandpa, I hear what he says. If I focus on grandma, but at the same time, I'm being bombarded by, and maybe the guy across from me is saying something as well. This is the problem I'm having with this. It's not really a problem, but it's part of the limitations. If he did hear voices, what did they say to him? Whatever happened to Henry McDowell? Just five years after McDowell went rogue, 
A prominent Woodford citizen by the name of John Harbour went into Britford Hollow to hunt. He was shot by persons unknown. It appeared as if he was dragged several feet and his fully loaded gun placed next to him. Who shot John Harbour? And why did they shoot him? Reports of strange lights in the sky, sounds with no explanation, and odd odors on the mountain predate colonial settlements. These reports combined with the many strange disappearances have led to speculation about UFOs and wormholes in the area. Still, the strangest report may be the Bennington Monster. Thought to be an early Bigfoot or Sasquatch, the monster has been described as well over 6 feet tall, with hair from its head to its toes. The first sightings of the monster was reported in the early 19th century when it rushed a stagecoach on a washed out road. The beast knocked the stagecoach onto its side and fled into the dark with a roar. Luckily, no one was harmed. Section 4 The night that that stagecoach was flipped over, why did the beast knock it over? So I cut the end of their response off by asking the next question, but I think they were going to say something like uh, they could not remain in control of the stagecoach or something like that. Was it a bear that flipped that stagecoach over? What kind of creature flipped that stagecoach over? Is the Bennington monster an actual Bigfoot? Has a Bigfoot ever killed anyone in that area? Are Bigfoots responsible for any of the five disappearances associated with this triangle? Has a UFO, sorry, has a UFO with aliens ever abducted anyone in that area? Has anyone ever disappeared through a wormhole on that mountain? The five disappearances within the triangle may be related by the color red. Is that true? If so, what does the color red have to do with these disappearances? I've only examined the Yeti mic so far, but I'm not really getting an answer. But in the very beginning, as soon as I said, what does the red have to do with these disappearances? There's a very faint little voice. I believe it's female. And I caught the word red in there. So when I blow it up, uh, you know, I don't know, is this Paula talking? Because Paula was one that was wearing a red jacket, and so was the little boy. And I believe it says we have our red coats. But I'll play that for you. But again, I had to crank up the volume on this because it's kind of hidden in there. Is there anything else we should know about that Bennington Triangle? 
All right, thank you, spirits. I've asked the first set of questions on the Bennington Triangle. At this time, I'd like to ask, if you have a message for any of our viewers, can you please say their name and then leave them a message? It's going to be a few days of editing this together, so uh, I'm just going to take my time with it. Thanks for watching. Catch the second half of this story to see the breakdown of the actual five disappearances for the Bennington Triangle. Thanks for watching. Workers were brought up to log and mine coal by real... Workers were brought up to log and mine coal by a real... Holy fruitcakes. Workers were brought up to log and mine coal by a road. That's the third time that I've done that. I can't say railroad. Railroad. And wormholes in the area. Still, the strangest report may be the bending. I'm going to do that over again because I just don't like it. The beast knocked the stagecoach onto its side and fled into the dark with a roar. Luckily, no one was harmed. That's a strange wrinkle. I've seen that wrinkle on my mother. <laughs>